back to our continuing coverage of the 2015 Mid-Season Invitational coming to you live from the campus of Florida State University here in Tallahassee. And what a matchup we've got coming your way. SKT versus EDG, the only two teams left that are undefeated right here at day one. And let's start by zooming in on the mid lane matchup, Pawn and SKT running Easy Hoon for this matchup. Why do you think they won for that and how do you think it's going to turn out? I think that one of my big questions coming into this tournament after looking at a lot of the uh, the finals and the post Cinder Hulk changes in China was what is what is Pawn's champion pool going to be because he's playing a lot of low wave clear champions like Cassidy uh, rather like Fizz. Now we saw his Cassiopeia earlier today, but if we look at Easy Hood's champion pool, he's in my opinion, the better Cassiopeia player, the better Azir player when com compared to Faker. And these are really, really big picks for SK Telecom in the meta. And even if we're just comparing Cassiopeia players in this game, I feel like Izuhun's a better Cassiopeia than we saw from Pawn. And honestly, this is also a team fight and by a result, a dragon fight meta right here. And SKT controls that more than anything. It's no surprise here that they've subbed in Izuhun because he's a better Azir and Cassiopeia player. And I think that translates very quickly into the dragon fights that we're going to see a lot of this game. Yeah, and mentioning the subs, Izuhun, but they also brought Bengi here. Uh, how much of a factor will he be knowing that they have good dragon control? And on the other hand, Clear Love also so loves coming into this one. This is a really interesting thing because I think Sejuani becomes an incredibly important pick. I also wonder how important the Rek'Sai is going to be for Bengi or if it's going to be ineffective when we actually get to see the clash of repeated team fights. I mean, there's one thing to have Tremor Sense around Dragon Pit for Bengi, but it's another thing to have Clear Love on Sejuani. Whether or not those are targeted picks or bans, I think have a pretty big sway on this game. Yeah, and I think if you're SKT, you go ahead and ban the Sejuani here. You really don't want Clear Love having that. It really hasn't been a power pick for Bengi. He's a lot better on Rek'Sai and Nunu, generally speaking. So go that route instead. Ban the Gnar, I think, and ban the Sejuani. Because if you look at a lot of the playoff games from EDG, when they weren't playing these big wombo hard CC compositions, when they tried to play Juggermaw, when they tried to play poke comps, they looked a lot weaker. So why not try and force them out of their comfort zone and play a different kind of game? Yeah, and final thought, maybe you mentioned the NAR already. The Marin versus Koro matchup is also huge in this one. Um, what do you think they're going to end up with, and are they going to get their hands on NAR at all? Well, this is, this is crazy. So Koro for NAR, and also Marin for Mauka. Yeah. Something that's been a little bit outside of norm for this tournament so far in particular is the gross amount of farm the top laners are actually getting. We're seeing a lot of standard lanes. If we're seeing a lane swap, they're not denying the top lane farm. And that sets up these miraculously good top laners in Koro and Marin in order to carry. So I actually feel like the Nars and the Hecarims and the Rumbles are maybe even higher priority than the Maokai if we're going to see the current trends hold. Yeah, and even so, yeah, with we hit these more high damage top laners, generally speaking. But just in terms of the records, too, Marin comes into this 13 and 1 all time on Maokai. Koro comes into this 19 and 1 all time on NAR. So these have been power picks for these players. They are specialists in this area. Will either of them get these picks? I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. Some of these records are going to break, too. We're only six games in. <laughs> yep. These are the only two undefeated teams left at MSI. Yeah, absolutely. What a matchup it is. We're going to send it over to Casters in just a little bit, but on the way, Pawn tells us about moving to the Chinese team and playing against the Korean team here at MSI. And EDG now having to play against, well, sort of Pawn, a little bit confused because now against his comrades, but from a different region. It's a little bit confusing there. But let's check out the starting lineups, ladies and gentlemen. On the blue side, it's SKT with Marin in the top lane, Bangi there in the jungle, Easy Hoon in the mid lane this time, and Bang and Wolf in AD carry and support. And on the red side is Edward Gaming here in this one. Koro one in the top lane, Clear Love in the jungle, Pawn in mid, Def on AD carry, and Mako on support. And Pawn said he was excited for this matchup. Everybody is extreme. This is the matchup. <laughs> yeah. We finally get to see number one China versus number one Korea. Everybody has been wanting a taste of this matchup ever since so much of the top Korean talent left Korea to go play for China. And they've had so many games in the last split to play with these yeah. players and incorporate them. Finally, we get to have this taste of the number one China versus number one Korea. Yes, it's just one game and it's just <laughs> group stages, but yes, 
So you could say we're excited, to say the least. Yeah, it, a little bit. Maybe it, a little bit excited. It is absolutely exciting. And I know you've cast the region a whole lot, Max. But EDG, I'm so impressed by their ability to have actually come together as a team. They're playing yeah. multiple languages. They type flash timers in English and in-game chat. Their ability to actually jump on the same target in team fights at a moment's notice is actually incredibly impressive. So these players have actually done, as you're mentioning, Kobe, come together so well as a team overall.